Chapter 21 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, The Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 21 The sun had already left the zenith. The travelers reached the mouth of that river where the savory Tahira salmon breeds abundantly, and whose banks are peopled by fishermen of the great Pichiguara race. They received the strangers with that generous hospitality which was a law of their religion, and Pochi, with the respect due to so great a warrior, and to a brother of Jacauna, the most powerful chief of the Pichiguaras. To rest the travelers, and to dismiss them with proper ceremony, the chief of the tribe received Martin, Iracema, and Pochi in the jangada, and spreading a sail to the breeze, bore them far down the coast. All the fishermen in their rafts follow their chief, and fill the air with a song of lament, accompanied by the murmurings of the urasa, which imitates the sobbing of the wind. Beyond the fishing tribe and nearer the serras was the hunting tribe. They occupied the borders of the Suipé, covered with forests, where abounded deer, the fat paca, and the slender jacu. Hence, the dwellers of these regions had named it the hunting ground. Jaguarassu, or great tiger, the chief of these hunters, had a wigwam on the banks of the lake formed by the river as it nears the sea. Here, the travelers met with the same warm reception which they had received from the fishermen. After leaving Soipé, the travelers crossed the river Pacochi on whose borders flourished the leafy banana, waving its green plumes. Farther on is the Iguapé stream, whose waters encircle the dunes of sand. In the distance, crowning the horizon, appeared a high sand hill, snowy white as the ocean foam. The summit overhung the palms and cocos, and appeared like the bald head of the condor, there awaiting the storm blowing up from the ocean bounds. Pochi knows the great hill of sand? asked the Christian. Pochi knows all the land that belongs to the Pichiguaras, from the banks of the great river which forms an arm of the sea, to the banks of the stream where the jaguar lives. He has been already to the height of Mokoribi, and thence he has seen, far at sea, the big Igaras of the white warriors, the enemies of my brother, who dwell in Mearim. Why callest thou the great sandhill Mokoribi? The fisherman of the beach, who puts out to sea in Jangadas, there where the Achi flies, is sad, because he is far from his cabin, where sleep the children of his blood. When he returns, and his eyes first behold the hill of sand, Gladness returns to the man's breath. Then he says that the hill of the sands gives joy. The fisherman says, well, thy brother, like him, is happy when he sees the mountain of sand. Martin and Pochi ascended the head of Mokoribi. Iracema followed with her eyes her spouse, wandering like the Jassanã round the beautiful bay, which earth formed to receive the sea. On her way, she collected the sweet cajus, which appeased the warrior's thirst, and gathered delicate shells to ornament her neck. The travelers dwelt in Mokoribi three sons. Then Martin directed his steps beyond it. The wife and friend followed him to the bank of a river, whose banks were overflowed and covered with mangrove. The sea entering into it formed a basin of clear, crystalline water, which appeared almost scooped out of the stone, like a vase of pottery. While reconnoitering this place, the Christian warrior began to reflect. To the present time, he had marched without any object, and he had allowed his steps to guide him where they would. He had no other thought, except to absent himself from the taba of the Pichiguaras, that he might the better soothe the sorrow in Iracema's heart. The Christian knew by experience 
that travel cures a saudade, because the soul rests whilst the body moves. But now, seated on the beach, he pondered. But she came. The white warrior thinks the breast of his brother is open to receive his thought. Pochi's brother thinks that this is a better place than the margins of Jaguaribi for the taba of the warriors of his race. In these waters, the big igaras that come from the far-off land may lie sheltered from wind and sea. Hence, they can fall upon the Arim and destroy the white tapuyus, the allies of the tabajaras, enemies of Pochi's nation. The Pichiguara chief reflected and replied, my brother may go and bring his warriors. Pochi will plant his taba close to the mairi of his friend. Iracema drew nigh. The Christian made a gesture of silence to the Pichiguara chief. The voice of the husband is silent, and his eyes fall when Iracema comes. Shall she depart? Thy husband wants thee nearer, that his voice and eyes may penetrate still deeper into thy soul. The beautiful savage was radiant with smiles, as a ripening flower opens its petals, and she leant upon the shoulder of her warrior. Iracema listens to thee. These plains are joyful, and will be more so when Iracema dwells in them. What says her heart? Iracema's heart is ever glad when she is with her lord and warrior. The Christian followed the bank of the river, and chose a place for his wigwam. Poti felled the carnauba to make props of its trunks. The daughter of Araquen weaved, fen-like, the fronds of the palms to thatch the roof and quaff the walls. Martin dug the trenches and made a door of laths and layers of bamboo. When night came, the lovers slung their hammock in their new cabin, and the friend slept in the porch which faced the rising sun. End of chapter 21